Now that we have our database and we also have our bare application available, let us start adding forms or pages to this application. So we'll do create report and form pages. So first what we're going to do is you've got the application, go back to the basic page of the application, not the running application, but in the development mode, it should be in another tab. At this point, we can say create page because we're going to create a new page. And what we're going to do now is to create a page with which we can create customers. Okay, so uh, here, when, see, when you say create a page, you see this option, click on form. And then within form, there are several options for creating forms. The kind of form that we want is what they call report with form. Okay, in other words, when you invoke this, you will first see a list of all customers whoever customers exist at this point of course there is there are no customers and then you can click on a particular customer to go and edit the customer in a form or you can click on a create button to go and create a new customer you'll see how this plays out when we do this so select the report with form option and then fill in the details shown here right because we're going to create a report for customers i'm go i'm saying customer report is the name of the report page and customer form is the name of the form page. You'll see the difference between these two pages shortly. Okay, and then uh, if you want, you can select the breadcrumb option here. Breadcrumb option is basically uh, just something that appears on the top of the screen to tell you how you got to that particular screen. Okay, so after that, you can click, uh, you know, here parent entry, leave it as no parent entry, and then click next. Okay, and then it's it's going it's asking you do you want to create a navigation menu so that we can reach this customer report page of course we do want a navigation menu right so when you see the main application on the left hand side you'll have uh, something to click on to reach that particular screen that we just created yes so we want to create a new navigation menu entry okay and then leave it as no parent selected and call it customer report okay so what's going to happen is on the left hand side you'll now see an entry called, after you finish this, you'll see an entry called customer report. And when you click customer report, it'll bring you to the report of customers. And from there, you can go to the form for a customer. Okay, so when you do this, and then uh, we are selecting create a new navigation menu entry because we don't have that yet. And this navigation menu entry is not going to be a sub menu entry of anything else. It's going to be at the root. Okay, so then, it's asking you, okay, you want to create this customer report, which table do you want to use? Okay, so of course, this is, it's going to come to this page and uh, select local database. That's probably selected by default. Okay, and then source type, leave it as table, right? Because you're going to create the form based on a table. And this table slash view owner, that's going to be your, your workspace name there's no way you, you there's nothing else for you to change it to that's the only option available in the drop drop down so you don't need to do anything with this uh, the correct value will be populated anyway okay so here you have to select the table okay in order to select the correct table what you have to do is to click on this uh, thing here okay so that will show a list of all the available tables for in your workspace from which you can select the customer table okay but be a little patient here because after you click on this it may take a little while for that list of tables to populate okay so apex is running pretty slow because after all your apex application is running on some server in oracle and the screen on which you're running it is only a front end okay so there could it could take a little while for this page to to load so after you click this be a little patient it may appear that it's not showing you any tables but if you wait long enough the tables will come up right or alternately within that window there's a button at the bottom which says show more just click that sometimes that causes it to come back okay so as soon as you select the correct table all the columns in that table are automatically shown here okay so the idea is that it you it might show the columns here and then you select the columns you want but by default we want all the columns so by default it simply puts all the columns here if for any reason you don't want a particular column, you can select it and click on the left arrow to remove that column. Okay, what that means is that you don't want that particular column of the table to appear in any table, uh, in any report or form. 
okay it's not a great idea you created the ERD with all those columns so I would say just let all the columns be there okay so then when you click next it's going to ask you about primary keys okay so it's still the same table okay and with primary key we are saying select the primary key column right in other words it wants to know what is the primary key of your table right and uh, this is the default option select so let it be uh, okay if it's not uh, use this option select primary key column right and then here the primary key column pull it down and select customer ID leave the secondary key column alone okay leave this blank uh, or leave this as is okay so once again when you create that means essentially you have given all the inputs for it to complete this page okay so after you click create here it's going to do a lot of work okay and it could take a little while to come back okay sometimes what may happen is that it'll just keep on uh, spinning and you'll see that nothing has happened but in reality it has already created the page but for whatever reason this uh, front end doesn't refresh so some of those kinds of things happen okay uh, so what happens is after it successfully creates the page it comes to this window here okay this is essentially all the details about the page that it just created okay we don't need to understand all of the details here there are a few details you need to understand and I will be explaining those details as we go forward okay so at this point you can just click the run button right here okay that that button will run your application and your application will now look like this okay the menu may not show up on the left hand side if you click these three lines the menu will also show up on the left hand side okay so right now it is showing you a report of all the customers which is of course precisely zero customers we don't have any customers in our system yet okay so this report is completely empty but you can create a customer by clicking on the create button okay so this is your report page and when you click on the create button you come to the form page okay so that's the form that you use to create a customer okay and notice here you've got the opportunity here to click enter a first name last name street city etc etc and then you can click the create button it'll create a customer okay so I just entered some details and pressed create and then it so now our customer report indeed has a customer okay so that's just the customer we created and then of course there's an acknowledgement here saying row has been created okay now if you want to go make changes to this you can click on this edit button on the left hand side and uh, you will then be shown the form again and you'll be able to go and make some changes to the customer that you created okay so I clicked on that I came here and I may make some changes and apply changes so I can uh, change that. Notice here that on the left hand side you've got customer report. That's the navigation menu that we created earlier. Okay, so now there's one thing we want to do, which is that remember one of the fields in your customer table is the customer ID, it's the primary key. But we're not seeing the customer's ID either on the report or here. Okay, it might be a good idea for us to see it. So now what we want to do is to go and edit the page to add the customer ID to it. So in order to edit the page, every time you're in development mode and you see a page, you can always edit the details of the page by clicking on the bottom. It says edit page X, whatever the page number of the current page is. Okay, so I'm going to, you click on that. Okay, and then what we're going to do is exactly this, to make the primary key visible on the form page okay so this is again it comes back to this page details okay the primary key notice that here you've got customer form if you open it out you'll see uh, all the pay, all the fields in the customer form and notice that there is primary key customer ID okay that's the primary key so the, the customer ID field is here and notice also that it says on the out here that it's a hidden field okay so if you click on that and if you look on the right hand side okay it will show you that this is hidden okay notice here that this is now a hidden field if you click on customer ID this is a hidden field okay and what we want to do is to make it visible 
right? So you pull down that thing near the hidden and then select display only, okay? So what's going to happen is it's going to have only display the customer ID. It's not going to allow you to edit the customer ID, okay? So once you do that, you can then, uh, and you can give a label to it called customer ID, okay? Otherwise, the by default, the label is simply new, okay? And then you can save because we made some changes, we need to save it. And then if you run it, notice that now customer ID is showing up, but it's display only. If you try to edit it, nothing will happen. Okay, so we made the customer ID appear on the form page. Later on, I'll show you how to make the customer ID appear on the report page as well. Okay, so just for uh, to have some data, let's add one more customer instance. Okay, so I'm going to go there, enter some, some data, then create, and now I have two customers. Okay, so what we want to do is to repeat this above process for all the entity types which are not associative entity types. Okay, so you want to repeat the same process. So for example, we'll have a page for customer, we'll have a page for product, uh, we'll have a page for sales order. Sales order will come later because that's connected with an associative entity type that will come later. Okay, so product category, all of those you will create this. Okay, if for any reason you have to generate the same page more than once, for example, I did customers and something happened, I want to generate customers again. Okay, then do not create a new navigation entry because the first time around when you created it, you already created this navigation menu item. So you connect the new page to the existing item, okay? So how do you do that? It's going to look like this, right? So when you come to that part, when you're creating the page again, right? So here, instead of saying create a new navigation item, say, you know, identify an existing one to connect to this. And then here you'll see the old one is still there, select that. I want to quickly jump back to our logical model. Okay, I had said just now that go and create a page for every entity type which is not an associative entity type, okay? But I just want to expand a little bit on that. So in this case, what you'll do is, we've already created the page for customer, and let's say we also create a page for product category, okay? Now we've got two associative entities, order item and product category membership, okay? Now for these associative entity types, don't create a page yet, okay? Don't repeat the procedure. But when it comes to each of these associative entity types, you want to find out how will you see that, right? I mean, how will you navigate to that particular item? So for example, if I take order item, okay? Now, I'm not going to see order items all by themselves, right? There's no point in simply me seeing a particular individual order item because after all, when I'm viewing an order item, I'm looking at an order and I want to see all the items on that particular order. Right? So when I'm looking at order item, I'm always going to be looking at it in the context of a sales order. That's what makes logical sense. Okay, so therefore, don't create a page for sales order as well. Now, create a page for product and of course, create a page for customer. Okay, so now, uh, how about product category membership? Well, that's an associative entity type. You're not going to uh, create a page for that, okay? But once you've created the product page, you can then create the page for, because we will look at project categories for membership from a product category. That is, we'll say this is the main product category, which are all the categories that fall under it, right? So we will want to look at product category membership in the context of a product category, okay? So once again, there's no need to create a page now for product category. Later on, we'll be creating separate pages for sales order and product category, and those pages are called master detail pages, okay? So because we'll look at a sales order, while we are looking at a sales order, we'll also look at the order items. Similarly, we look at product category, and while we are looking at product category, we'll also look at product category membership, okay? So right now, we need to create a page for customer and a page for product and a page for product category. Uh, sorry, no, no page for product category now, right? Because sales order and order item will go together. 
product category and product category membership will go together. So right now we need only these two pages. Okay, so just to summarize, when I said do the same for all entity types that are not associative entity types, that's not completely correct, right? Because for every associative entity type, you will want to determine how will you, uh, you know, what is it connected to most importantly. So order item is most logically connected to sales order. So therefore, you will be creating later on a master detail page for both sales order and order item together. Similarly, product category and product category membership are connected together. You'll be creating separate page for those two together, right? So at this point, you only need a page for product and customer. That's it.